Hey, I know it's been a while since we've been over at the house in Central Oregon, and a lot of you guys have been asking, because I've been reading the comments, and you guys are saying, hey, how's the progress on the house in Central Oregon? What have you done so far? So I thought we'd do a quick little update video, bring you over here, and show you everything that we've done. So let's go check it out. So to answer the question, what have we been doing on the house in Central Oregon? Well, as you can see, not a whole lot to the actual physical building, but that doesn't mean we haven't been working on stuff. For example, this is the first time I've done a home remodel project on this scale. And apparently, if you're gonna do something to your own home that you own, you first have to get permission from other people before you can do that and you have to get these weird pieces of paper called permits. I don't know, it's this whole crazy thing where you have to go to this office and you gotta submit plans and they gotta tell you it's okay to do this stuff. It's strange, but we had to go through that whole process to get everything permitted, which took a little while. And then there was some engineering work that we had to have done. I don't know if you remember this little clip from the demolition video. Can we take this out? The answer is always gonna be yes. The real question is, is it a good idea? Now, when we tore down this half wall divider in the comments section, you guys really just were very concerned that this was structural. The entire building was going to fall down. We never should have taken this down and it was a huge mistake. And we were pretty confident you were wrong, but we wanted to make sure. So we did have an engineer come in, look at the structure of the house and tell us if we needed to do something here. And yeah, he said we needed to do something here. So you were right. I was wrong, but we were both right in the sense that yes, something needs to go there, but no, the building didn't fall down. And the engineer said, it's fine for a while. It's just probably a good idea in case there's a heavy snow load that we do replace this beam. But we wanted to do that anyways, because now there's this big gap between the beams. So long story short, he just said we should do what we wanted to do anyways. So the plan is to just replace the half wall with a similar beam and then once it's painted it should all look handy dandy. The other thing we had the engineer look at was this window header. Now the plan is to remove all of these windows and put a nice big sliding door package that really opens up the space and gives a lot of natural light and you can see out. I was excited when we tore this wall apart and we found out that there was a header up here that went all the way across. But as I suspected, the engineer said this header is not quite large enough to span the distance and accommodate the sliding door package. So part of what we found out we need to do is rip out this header and replace it with another one, which is going to be kind of a process because we're going to have to support the load of the beams while we do it. But that's why you hire professionals. Don't worry, I'm not going to start ripping anything out. I shouldn't. And then the engineer did look at one more thing. This is the ceiling in the master bedroom. This is also the ceiling in the master bedroom. We decided that we were going to remove this box because as we mentioned in the whole walkthrough in the demolition video, it's just kind of sitting here and very awkward for this room. It eats into the room. You lose about a third of the space. So we're gonna transition this back into the ceiling in the master bedroom. Now, the nice thing is the ceilings are so high in there that in doing that, we're still gonna have nine foot ceilings in that one section right when you walk in the door. So I don't think it's gonna be that awkward. But we also had to have some engineering done on this to make sure that we were gonna do it correctly, that we would get the right size beam to then support the floor and the walls and all that stuff. And engineering takes a while to get the drawings done, and then that has to be done before we can submit it for the permits and get approval. So yeah, this process has taken a while, which means we haven't really been able to get started. But there's also other stuff we have been able to do. Let me show you. 
Now, all in all, the windows in this house really weren't terrible, but the bummer is they're all single pane because it was built in the 70s and double pane wasn't as common back then. So they're not very energy efficient. Thankfully, the kind people at Portland Millworks reached out and they helped us figure out a better solution for all the windows. So we spent the last couple weeks picking out and measuring for all new windows in the entire house and new front doors, new master bedroom door, new garage door, and we're even getting that nice sliding door package from them. So if you want some doors or windows, you should probably check out Portland Millworks because, oh geez. Another thing we've been using this time for is to figure out all the finishes we want in the house because we have to get that stuff ordered because apparently it can take a long time for finishes to come in. One of which is the flooring. Now we haven't decided exactly what type of flooring we're going to do. We definitely know we're going to do some form of hardwood floor. We like wood floors. We want those throughout with the exception of the bathrooms. We're going to do tile in there. Talk about that in a second. There's a few different options for flooring. We could do a traditional hardwood floor that we have laid and then sanded and then finished. We can do a floating floor that clips together. We can do a pre-finished hardwood floor and an engineered hardwood floor that's nailed down or glued down. I know I don't wanna do a floating floor because although it saves a lot of money, it just doesn't feel quite right when you're walking around. It doesn't have that sound, that stability. I know I'm gonna get a lot of people in the comment sections arguing with me on this one, but I want to do an engineered hardwood floor, I think. I haven't decided on a brand. This isn't a plug for some company. I'm just trying to figure out what I wanna do. This one's too dark. This one's too pink. I think we're gonna do something really light like this. Now, if you come in here and take a look at this, the nice thing with engineered hardwood flooring is that you got a stable back, which is plywood in this case, and then you still have solid wood on the top. And this is your wear layer. So it means that this is gonna determine how many times you could potentially refinish the floor if you need to. This one's about an eighth of an inch, maybe a little over thick. So you could sand that down, oh, probably three times and refinish your floor. Now, a common misconception is that solid hardwood floor gives you way more times that you can sand it down and refinish it. But that's not necessarily true because all hardwood floor is tongue and groove. So the thickness of the wood floor before it gets to the tongue is the same as the thickness of the wear layer on most engineered hardwood floor. So when you think about it, if you sand down to that tongue, well, you're gonna expose all those tongue and groove joints and you can't go any farther. So if you're paying for three quarter inch thick, real hardwood floor, doesn't mean you can sand down three quarters of an inch. You can only sand down about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch until you get to that tongue. So that might help some of you out there make decisions on whether you wanna go with real hardwood floor that's solid or an engineered product like this. In my opinion, engineered products have gotten so good in the past decade that they're really tough to beat. And the factory finish you get with them is so rock solid that you're probably not gonna need to refinish it any time in your lifetime. So probably do something like this. Remember this thing over here? Yeah, when I almost died, cutting out that shower and finding all these exposed wires. Once I got half of it removed, I discovered something absolutely horrifying. On the other side of the insert, was all manner of electrical wiring, 120, 220, the house ground, things I'd never even seen before. How I didn't hit those with the Sawzall, I have absolutely no clue. <sighs> Good times. We are gonna have an electrician come in and rerun all of this, so don't worry, that is happening. And another thing we decided to do is get rid of the fiberglass tub insert, which we already ripped out, but we're not gonna replace it with another insert. We're gonna do full tile, floor to ceiling. We're gonna do a tile floor and we're gonna do tile walls. Now, tile has always been this frustrating thing because for the longest time, I thought that Home Depot and Lowe's and maybe a few specialty stores in my area were the only options to go and pick out tile. That is until I found an awesome website tilebar.com got online and they basically have any tile you could imagine they got funky tile they got cool tile they got white tile and blue tile i mean well 
they pretty much have all the colors, not just white and blue. But they have a lot of tile in there. Grout, sealer. They have uh, bull nose and trim and, I mean, anything that you would need for tile. So I was able to get on there. Me and my wife, we picked out all the tile for the space and Tile Bar sent it out to us. The shipping was fast. It was amazing. So in here, we're going to do a cool combination of tile and it's going to look something like this. For both of the shower walls, we're doing this Wabi Sabi tile. It's another hand painted tile, so it's got a very organic look. We're going to do a row of them vertical along the base right off the floor and then we'll transition to the traditional brick pattern all the way up the wall. So we're gonna do this exact same pattern for the floors and all the bathrooms, but it's gonna be in three different colors. We have this color that's gonna go in the main bathroom floor. We have this color that's gonna go in the master bathroom floor. And then it's not here yet, but we have a Carrera marble version of this pattern. So it's kind of going to be cool. Same pattern in all bathrooms, but different colors. They so were doing this Carrera marble in the laundry room. We're doing this hand painted subway tile in the kitchen. It doesn't show up very much here, but there's a little variation on color from tile to tile. Anything worth doing in life takes practice. You gotta put time into it and you get out of it what you put into it. And it's funny how we don't do this with other things in our life that are actually really important, like responsibilities that we should be doing when we get older, like finding life insurance. And the funny thing is, it's not even that hard. I mean, it's way easier than learning how to play this thing. All you gotta do is go to policygenius.com and they're gonna help you find the right life insurance policy for you. And it literally could not be simpler than that. If you don't believe me, just Check this out. Policy Genius knows how valuable your time is. Their technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks to find your lowest price. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same-day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Their licensed, award-winning agents can help you find the best fit for your needs. They work for you, not the insurance company. So that means they don't have an incentive to recommend one insurer over another. So you can trust their guidance. It's no wonder they have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. Now, you might be wondering, where do I go now? How do I sign up? What do I do? Well, that part's really easy. You just go here. Your family deserves peace of mind, and a life insurance policy through Policy Genius can give it to them. Head to policygenius.com slash bourbonmoth or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. Hey, I want to give a big thanks to Policy Genius for sponsoring this video. Check that link down below. And do the right thing. Find yourself some life insurance. Make sure you and your family are covered. You didn't even see me standing there, huh? Because, well, I kind of match. Believe it or not, I am not the biggest fan of the orange house. I think they were trying to go for like a natural cedar look because of the cedar shake, but it just looks like orange paint. So we're going to repaint the entire house. We've been working on what color we're going to paint it. And the color we decided is... <laughs> I'm not going to tell you yet. We're going to do some big reveal once it gets painted, so... I mean, I can't tell you everything. Where's the surprise? Where's the theatrics? Blue. It's going to be bright blue. <laughs> Just kidding. No, it's not. <laughs> green. It's going to be a dark green. <laughs> no, really, it's going to be green. No, I'm <laughs> just kidding. It's not. It's not. See? See? This is fun. So you'll just have to wait and see. All right. Pink. One of the things I love about this house is the expansive deck on the back of the property. It's huge, it's got a beautiful view of the forest, and it's got this lower deck, which is the perfect place to put a hot tub. There's a few things I need to double check. A, 
can a hot tub go here? I know that there's some weight issues with hot tubs and water and they get really heavy. So I'm gonna crawl under the deck. I'm gonna check the support system under here and make sure that it's strong enough to hold a hot tub. I already know that there is electrical for a hot tub run right out here, which makes me think that there probably was a hot tub here at one point. So I assume it's strong enough to put on the deck unless they had the hot tub down on the ground and plugged it in right here. So let's crawl under the deck and let's see what's under there. Oh. All right, now this is exactly what I was hoping to find under here. As you can see that under the um, deck on the top, they built basically like another deck that is sitting on top of concrete, which is pretty impressive that they had the forethought to do that. And then it's supported with all of these four by sixes on top of the deck that's got plywood, pressure treated wood, concrete. So it looks like this has ample support under this deck to hold up a hot tub, which means there's only one thing left to do. I mean, sure, is it a little early to go hot tub shopping before we've done a lick of work on the actual house? Well, probably. But does it hurt to go look and pick out the hot tub that we want? Absolutely not. Just don't tell my wife. She told me not to buy a hot tub. When it comes to the exterior of the house, we're not doing a lot other than the fact that I mentioned we're gonna paint the exterior. Of course, the windows are gonna be replaced. That's on the exterior. But the one thing on the exterior that I wanted to figure out was the front porch. There's no cover over the front door. I mean, when it's snowing or raining outside, you go from basically snow right here, directly inside. And if we're gonna spend a bunch of money replacing all the floors on the inside of the house, I don't want renters going from snow covered shoes, wet boots, muddy feet, right onto the clean hardwood floor. I mean, you can see this has been a problem in the past. We put down this scrap of carpet, but the subfloor already has some water damage from this threshold because when it's pouring down rain, this door just gets hit with everything nature has to throw at it. As snow piles up here and melts, obviously the water has found a way in. So we want to find a solution to fix this problem. So the new cover is going to basically start right underneath that upper bathroom window. It's going to parallel the roof line of the garage roof here. So it should look nice and natural and it's going to come out about seven feet which should be right around where this rock is, which will give us a nice big covered area. We can put a bench or maybe a table and some chairs out here. And best of all, there's not gonna be snow piling up under the covering. When we bring that cover out, obviously it would be a little weird if you could still see the old roof underneath. So we're gonna cut off all the tails of these beams. We're gonna cut off the little bit of overhang that is on the roof right now. And then we're gonna bring the cedar shake all the way up, build a false wall underneath the new overhang. And so this wall is just gonna look like it was always there. It's gonna butt right up to the bottom of the new porch. And you're never even gonna know that we added anything. This will also be really nice when we replace this front door. We're gonna do a full lit front door, which means there's gonna be glass through the whole thing to let a lot of natural light in. The only bummer is, I don't think there's gonna be a place for Mr. Fox. While I was at the house, I also took the opportunity to do a little bit of, you know, yard work, chores, maintenance, things that needed to be done. I blew off the driveway and the back deck. I tried blowing out the inside, but that didn't work too well. I made sure the fish in the pond were still happy and healthy and living their best life. And I even climbed up on the roof to see how hard it would be to remove this fox weather vane. Boy, these people had a thing for foxes. You know, a friend of mine told me you should always pour for your friends first. Mm -hmm. So you're not gonna pour any for me? So things that we need to do mm -hmm. on the house ourselves that aren't being subbed out is the back deck obviously needs to be refinished at some Absolutely. point. I don't think we should even worry about that until after the house is painted because there's going to be people with ladders and everything all over the place. Yeah. Um, that little closet thing behind you for the wood storage, I would like to turn that into a little bar. Metal 
and glass doors on the top uh -huh. with some shelves, glasses, whiskey, that sort of thing up there. I want to keep the wood storage on the bottom. Kara, that's my wife, would like us to try and do what she calls, and I think is what it's called, German schmear on this brick fire. Sounds like a pastry. It does sound like a pastry or something that like German gang members would do as initiation. It's almost like a whitewash over the brick, but it's not a whitewash because you can still see the brick, but it's like got oh, the yeah. schmear stuff on it. It actually looks pretty nice. I've never done it in my life, okay. uh, but we're gonna try and figure it out and we'll see what happens. And a new mantle? And then, yeah, we gotta do a new mantle in here too. We need to build all the kitchen cabinets, but we can't install those until after the flooring's done. Same um, with all the bathroom vanities. I can install those until the floor is done. So we kind of have to wait for that stuff. We're going to have to build an island, which we can really build at any island? time because we're just going to kind of set that in place. But again, we can't install it until the floors are done. Okay. The upstairs, what is going to be the bunk room for the kids there? We're going to do built in bunks, three or four of them. Now, if I do them before we put the floor in and we do the flooring uh -huh. around it, we could save some square footage on flooring. Absolutely, you could. But then if we ever decide we want to make it a regular bedroom and rip the bunks out, there's going to be holes where there's not flooring. So I feel like we yeah. should probably just wait until the flooring's done in there too. And just set them on top. And then just set them on yeah. top. That way, if you ever want to change that room around in the future, you can. Absolutely. The drain in front of the garage, I noticed, is not draining. I don't know how involved that project's going to be. We're going to have to do some digging to see why it's clogged. Well, my guess is it's lodged with pine needles Yeah, I know. Everywhere. There's a lot of pine needles all over. Obviously, we're going to do all the trim work in here. Get I'm going to do the tile in the kitchen for the okay. backsplash. Kitchen tile. I'm going to do the tile on the floor in the laundry room. I'm not going to do the tile for the showers. I just don't have time. I'm not over here enough. Um, so we're going to have them do the shower. Okay. We have to redo the stairs. We're going to have to work with Corey, the GC, to figure out the best timing on that. Okay. Lots yeah. of decisions to be made. Uh, are you building anything for the bedrooms? Maybe beds. Maybe dressers. You Maybe. build the beds? I've built beds before. Well, I know you've built beds before, but... We could build the beds. Build I'm not saying I'm going to. I'm just saying we don't have we to build the beds. Could we don't have to build everything? You don't have to build everything. We could build some stuff. We don't there have to are build these everything. places called stores where you can buy furniture and it's already made. You don't have to do it all yourself. So, but you can if you want to. <laughs> and if we end up doing it, don't worry. We'll show you how to do it. Yeah. Oh, and we'll probably uh, make some plans so you can do it too. Oh yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. Listen, guys, I have no clue when this thing is going to be finished or when we're even going to really start working on it. <laughs> There's a lot of balls up in the air, but I promise we're going to keep updating you as it goes along. And whether we're doing the work or we're just checking in on the contractors we've hired to do the work, we will keep bringing you over here and showing you the progress as it moves forward. And hopefully at some point before I'm dead, this place will be done. And then when it's all finished, you can come stay here. I'm just excited to see you try a German schmear. Uh-huh. I wonder what it tastes like. Probably better than that. Mm.